Hey, Tai here, so welcome to the Viatech channel. I think there's a lot of confusion regarding the Oculus Quest 2 and the Link connection because many new people are actually coming to VR, so welcome, of course. And I think that even from Oculus, we didn't get all the information needed to know how to play PC VR games on our Oculus Quest 2. Now, this video is also gonna be particular because we're gonna feature the 90 Hertz mode that I've been testing from a while, being able to play wireless PC VR games on our Oculus Quest 2. So should you go buy the official cable? Should you go buy the third party cable? Should you go buy a new router? Should you go buy a Wi-Fi 6 router? Well, uh, let's talk about it, right? Let's get into it. All right, so I have to explain this because I saw many different comments about this that didn't really make much sense. So the Oculus Quest 2 is a standalone headset. That means that you can play games made for this headset, like it's your console, for example, that are optimized and specifically made for this headset, and of course, in this case, also the Oculus Quest 1. Now, you may have seen games with amazing graphics out there, like Half-Life Alyx, Boneworks, and many, many others. But if you really want to play those games, well, you're gonna need a PC and, of course, a cable, or in the thing that I'm gonna discuss, a good router for a good Wi-Fi connection. Now let's start with Link, that on the Oculus Quest 2 is super well integrated. In the moment when you connect the official cable or any other 3.1 Gen 2 cable, I'm gonna leave a list in the description below, by the way, of the cables that I'm using. You're gonna get prompted in the headset if you want to connect to the Oculus Link, or you can go to settings and select it directly from there. At the point, the Oculus software is gonna open on your PC. Of course, you have to install it if you don't have it. And you're gonna be able to play all the games on the Oculus Store, like Medal of Honor, that is gonna arrive very, very soon. Or on the other side, you can just jump in Steam VR, installing, of course, Steam and Steam VR, and playing all the games over there, like Half-Life Alyx. So with the cable, is for sure the easiest method. It's just a matter of plugging in and start to play. And with the right cable, like the official cable, you're also going to be able to charge the headset while playing. That's a big plus because at that point, you're not going to have to take in consideration the two hours battery life that you have over there. But even the official cable with the Oculus Quest 2 is not going to give you infinite battery because the battery is going to decrease anyway during gameplay. Now, Link gives you a great experience. It's super easy to use keeps the latency pretty low, the resolution output is pretty good, as we saw in the True the Lenses video, and it's gonna get even better. And in the future, we're gonna have the 90 Hz update to be able to compare it to a real PC VR headset. But yeah, you're still tethered, right? So that's where Virtual Desktop actually comes in. Now, Virtual Desktop is an application available on the Oculus Store, and you're able to use your PC directly on your Oculus Quest, in your monitors and stuff like that. So it's very good for productivity. One thing that not many people are aware of is that there is an experimental mode available actually siloading uh, this patch via SideQuest in this case right now, but that could change in the future, so I don't wanna go uh, super in depth about it. There's a link in the description below, by the way, on how to silo uh, with SideQuest, if you are interested in that. That brings the possibility to actually use PC VR wireless on your Oculus Quest. So that means that you can still retain your wireless freedom and be able at the same time to play games like Half-Life Alyx and stuff like that. And that's very impressive because that is not just wireless, but I've been testing with the dev from Virtual Desktop together with Mike at Virtual Reality Oasis to be able to push already the 90 Hertz refresh rate over there. Yeah, 90 Hertz, I think that doesn't work on Link yet. Now, the very interesting thing is that we work with Mike to understand if it's really worth it or not to actually change your router for a Wi-Fi AC, so the regular router you might have at home with a five gigahertz connection to a Wi-Fi 6. By the way, there's a lot of confusion about Wi-Fi 6. Yes, the Oculus Quest supports Wi-Fi 6, but doesn't support Wi-Fi 6E. That is the very, very famous new protocol arriving at the end of the year. Now, I'm gonna get a little technical, but if you really wanna go in depth about it, there's a video over here that I made, a deep dive tech video explaining Wi-Fi 6E and why we should be super excited about it. But to keep it brief, a Wi-Fi 6 router you can buy right now has a 1200 megabit per second bandwidth, as Mike showed in this video. But we're actually running on the same 5 gigahertz connection. So yeah, we have a boost in speed, but not really a boost when it comes to latency. Because yes, you're going to be able to transfer more data, but at the same time, you're using the same 5 gigahertz super congested network that we are used to right now. In Virtual Desktop, you're actually able to set different modes. Quality mode, the performance mode, the standard mode, and stuff like that. And you're also able to change the bitrate, so the compression that the video is gonna have to actually be able to be displayed 
at the right time on the Oculus Quest. Higher bitrate, better quality, but also higher latency, lower bitrate, lower quality, and also lower latency. So it really depends on you. Now, the difference that we notice from the Wi-Fi 6 uh, with mic and my connection with the Wi-Fi 5 with the three band router were pretty much minimal. We had really a difference of just 20 or 30 megabit per second in bitrate available to change. And that doesn't really make a difference in quality. And both we had the same latency of 22 and 23 milliseconds. That's it's a acceptable to play in VR, but it's not even comparable with the native PC VR user. And this is happening running games at 90 Hz, even on the Oculus Quest 2 wireless. So yeah, it's impressive and it's for sure a super acceptable experience. But if you're really prone to motion sickness, well, it's something that you have to take in consideration, of course. So should you go out and buy a Wi-Fi 6 router just to have a better experience? No, that will not really change anything. It's much better to have a band of your router just for your Oculus Quest. In that way, you're going to keep the latency very low and you're going to have pretty much the same exact quality because 20 uh, megabit per second in bitrate, uh, they really don't change much. It's not really noticeable, trust me. And if you have to address the elephant in the room, latency, well, that's a present at the end of the day. So it's something that you have to consider with Link and virtual desktop is not going to be comparable uh, with a PC VR experience native because there's the latency is pretty much brought to zero. Also for the controllers, instead with Link, we still have a little wobbly controllers and same thing with virtual desktop because of course over there as well we are wireless so did it kill completely pc vr is something we're gonna talk about in a future video but for now i have to tell you that this way link of virtual desktop are totally enjoyable and i really hope that in the future also oculus is gonna bring a native version of their wireless solution not just using the cable. So far I have to say though that the 90 Hz mode gets very, very close and also your wireless in this case. So the experience is really boosted by it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that thanks to the 2X in encoding and decoding capabilities with the XR2, we're really getting close to that hybrid headset that we all dreamed of. So yeah, the Oculus Quest 2 could be a very good solution as well, just for PC VR. The only thing that I want to add right now is that Link gives a better experience in terms of latency that is much more enjoyable when you play games very similar to PC VR. Instead, virtual desktop, of course, you have a little more latency, but at the end of the day, you are also wireless. So maybe that's why Oculus didn't push that update just yet. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it and this gave you a little more context about all the situation playing with the Quest 2 and PC VR. For the rest, remember, standalone games are still there and a great, great experience. Of course, if you want better graphics, if you want bigger games, uh, we still have the option with PC VR and I think that is awesome, wireless or wired. But yeah, that was all guys. If you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, like. Subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech and if you really love the channel, there's a join button down there and also the Patreon to get access to videos before and at the same time we have the merchandise with t-shirt, sticker and the mask 2020 item number one. And uh, remember that down there we also have the giveaway for the Oculus Quest 2 going on so if you want to grab one, well, uh, there's a good opportunity opportunity and uh yeah again like dislike subscribe see you guys next video thanks for watching ciao